for section 8.4. Uh, with still with statistics, we are now dealing with measures of dispersion and position. And so this deals a little more with uh, how spread out the data is and where items are located within the data. So, um, you know, the more information you can come up with like this uh, in a real life scenario, the more meaning terms will have. So just to give you one idea here of what this is talking about, uh, if you took a, these, take a look at these sets of numbers, um, if you look at the mean of each, you'll notice they have the same mean. Uh, so for anyone analyzing this data, they would need more information to tell more about what's going on. To give you a little more extreme example, if I had a, let's just say a class set of students and I wanted to analyze their test scores, uh, let's just say that the average test score in the room was an 80%. Well, if that's all the information that we had, we wouldn't know if that meant that half the class got a 75 and then the other half got an 85, or if half the class got a 60 and the other half got a 100. Both those cases would have an average of 80. Um, and so that's where we get into the spread of the data just to get more information. Um, and you can see on this case that these two both had different middle numbers. So that was the median of the first set and the median of the second set. Um, and, and so that's just a way of getting more information out of analyzing the data. So uh, the range I brought up in an earlier lesson, but that's simply the maximum score minus the minimum score. And those you do get on your calculator on the same page that we um, got all the other statistical information so far on that same page and we saw that in an earlier video um, as far as position of the data so when you get into percentile uh, this this has to deal with um, the percent of information provided so far up to a certain point point. Um, and so when we talk about say the 50th percentile because we mentioned this in an earlier lesson uh, the 50th percentile is the median and all that simply means is all the data up to the halfway mark or up to the 50th percentile mark and so um, in looking at a couple of these some a little bit different ideas here with notation um, our textbook does not cover well this area um, of percentiles so um, I'm gonna give you just a little bit of it right now but for the most part um, the things that we're going to be doing with this type of information and we're talking about the percent of scores up to that mark within the data and so uh, we're talking about all the scores like leading up to that point within the data so these are the main ones that you need to know for now um, the the 25 percentile marks so the lower quartile it represents the first 25 percent of the data uh, the middle quartile which we call the median is the 50th percentile of the data. Uh, the upper quartile is the 75th percentile of the data. Um, and so you get these, these quartile marks and those are the ones you need to know for now uh, for where that would, would represent. So, and I'll give you some more examples of that here in a minute. Interquartile range uh, is simply the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. So this represents the middle 50% of the data. So from the 25th percentile to the 75th percentile would represent the middle 50 percent. Uh, these numbers you do find also in your calculator on the same stats page that we've been looking at in the first couple lessons. Um, so as far as doing percentiles, uh, depending on what they give you and what they ask you for as far as doing things by hand or mostly by calculator, we'll mostly be doing this in a calculator. Um, but if you were going to do it by hand, you would have to make sure that your data is or is in order from least to greatest first. Uh, same idea with the median. If you're going to find the median, which is the 50th percentile, uh, you can't identify that until you put your data in order from least to greatest. And so one option that you do have in a calculator is if you created one big list of data in your calculator in list one, like we did in the last video, well, if you want your calculator to put them in order for you, it'll do that. So after you create your list, uh, if you were to go back into stat and choose sort A and then identify which list you want sorted and hit enter, uh, your calculator will reorganize the data for you in order from least to greatest. Um, and so that's something you could take advantage of if you need to. Uh, but for the most part, when it comes to identifying quartiles, we will be doing most of those either in a calculator or 
based on a graph. And so for the, the examples that you're seeing here, Q2, Q1, Q3, these are all identified in your calculator. When you type in this list of data and just go to stats and then one variable stats, uh, it, it gives you these three quartiles right here. It gives you the median, the first quartile, and the third quartile uh, just at the bottom of that stats page. So you can just scroll down and get those answers. Typically, this isn't something you would really be doing by hand. When it comes to doing kind of the, the non-quartile percents, like something like the 88th percentile or something like that, that is something we'll be answering from a graph. So really not something we would be doing by hand. So for now, let's just say, make sure you understand how to come up with the three quartile numbers within your calculator. Uh, one thing I'll point out is, so let's just say we said find the 42nd percentile mark. So at this point, what you could do is say, well, there were 20 pieces of data. So if I said 42% of 20 is 8.4, well, that means that the 42nd percentile is somewhere between eight and nine. Since we are talking about all of the terms leading up to this point, we have to round up and we would identify the ninth term that would include the first 42% of the data. And so if we looked at the ninth term in the data, the ninth term is 46. So we would use 46 as the 42nd percentile. Obviously, if we have to round up and we're in between terms, that's not as accurate. So that's where we'll get things like the cumulative frequency graph later on down the road to take care of information like this. It's going to be more accurate if we're doing it from a graph itself. One graph that we use a lot when it comes to quartiles is a box and whisker plot. This will probably look familiar to you. Uh, box and whisker plots are introduced pretty early on in math, as early as algebra, maybe pre-algebra. Uh, but here, here's the main idea that, of this that you really need to know. In a box and whisker plot, the whiskers are the lowest point, so the minimum, and the highest point, which is the maximum, those make up the whiskers. The three vertical lines of the box are your three quartile numbers. So you have the lower quartile, which is the 25th percentile mark. You have the median or the second quartile, which is the 50% mark, then you have the third quartile or the 75th percent mark is that vertical line. So those are the three vertical lines that make up the box within a box and whisker plot. The main idea that you need to know from that is if I have data points listed here and I'm supposed to interpret answers from this graph, well, from this number to this number represents 25% of the data. From Q1 to Q2, this represents 25% of the data. From Q2 to Q3 represents 25% of my data. And from Q3 to the max represents the last 25% of all of my data. One thing you're seeing in here uh, is the idea of an outlier. So an outlier would obviously just be some kind of an extreme number that doesn't really seem to fit with the rest of the data. And you don't want it to skew the information that you have, so we overlook it and we don't include it within our data. So there is a specific way that you're supposed to identify what qualifies as an outlier, and it's based on this formula that you see right here. If I do my inner quartile range, which is Q3 minus Q1, and I multiply that times 1.5, that's going to help me identify the outliers that we would have. So, and I'll show you that with a real number here in just a minute, but it's 1.5 units of the inner quartile range below Q1 and above Q3. And so I'll show you what that looks like here with a real number. So, uh, with what we're seeing right here, so we're seeing some key numbers here. If we identify the numbers that line up with our lines here, so we can see that Q1 represents 110. So we can see that oops, we can see that Q3 represents 200. So the inner quartile range is Q3, which is 200, minus Q1, which is 110. So right here we get an inner quartile range of 90. Let me skip these ideas for just a minute. So here's how we deal with the outliers. 
So if this is my interquartile range, if I multiply this by 1.5, then I get 135. So anything that is 135 units below 110 is an outlier. Anything that is 135 units above 200 is also an outlier. So for this question that you're seeing right here, that's where these numbers are coming from. So we did one and a half units of the interquartile range below Q1 as well as above Q3. And those are giving me uh, the, my standard for what would qualify as an outlier. Anything lower than this or higher than this would qualify as an outlier and we would not include it within our data. So if you see on the graph, this number and this number do fall within that category so these two points are listed right here and here as my outliers. And so and all that was based on this idea that we just talked about right here. So the median, again, we can see this is where we're getting the median right here. And obviously we would have to estimate that because it's in between lines. So that's estimated to be 148. The minimum value we're getting right here. And again, we're going to have to estimate that as best as we can. Looks like it's about 85. The max value, again, we're going to estimate as 330. And so those are just things that we're, we can estimate based on the graph that we have drawn for us. You can do a box and whisker plot on your calculator, but it's way more trouble than it's worth. There's a, there's a lot that goes into that. Uh, you have to set up proper settings within your calculator that have to be all changed in order for this to come out right on your calculator. And it's just unnecessary. It's these are not hard to create. Um, the five points of data that you need to draw a box and whisker plot, which are the min, Q1, Q2, Q3, and the max, those five points are all on your calculator when you do the one variable stats page. So you can easily create this diagram by hand. Uh, there's really no need for the calculator work on that. So even though your calculator can do it, I, I discourage you from spending the time on trying to figure out how to do this on a calculator. It's, it's just not that complicated to do by hand.